Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Buenaventura. I'll be talking about alternatives to opioids in the management of chronic pain. Frequently I'll get asked questions about the management of pain, and one at the top of the list are when to use opioids for pain. Uh, opioids are pain medications and they're going to be used for a clearly defined medical condition that's expected to cause pain and will limit the patient's ability to recover from an illness, rehabilitate, or remain functional in their job or in their activities of daily living. There are several types of pain. Um, acute pain is perhaps the easiest one to justify the use of opioids. These are situations where the patient has pain related to some recent event, particularly a trauma, surgery, or related to a, an established medical condition that's flared up, such as kidney stones or gout. And these patients, it's reasonable to treat these patients for pain and hope that the pain will get better as they recover from their illness. Chronic pain is chronic pain that lasts longer than 12 weeks after an injury or illness. Uh, it may be related to a medical condition. Some examples might be osteoarthritis or peripheral neuropathy. Or there may be no easily identified condition. Some examples might be fibromyalgia, headaches where the MRIs are negative, and abdominal pelvic back pain where x-rays and MRIs might be normal also. Uh, you want to evaluate for other factors of continued pain, such as issues of secondary gain, psychological causes such as anxiety or depression, as well as issues of drug addiction or criminal intent. Who is the best judge of how much pain a person is suffering? This is always difficult because pain is a subjective complaint. There's no objective test like a blood test or a blood pressure measurement. Patients will report their own pain, usually in a severity or a number, which is always subjective. The family physician then has to take this into consideration, along with the knowledge of that patient's background and medical history and psychological makeup, uh, as well as how functional they were before. Uh, the physician can ask family members for some advice or observations in the home setting. And basically, the physician is going to know these patients better than other specialists. Specialists can add a lot to the medical record. Specialists might include a specialist that's specific for the patient's medical condition, such as an orthopedic surgeon for hip arthritis uh, or a, a neurologist for headaches. Pain physicians treat pain conditions and they can help with certain pain conditions as well as making recommendations for treatments that might avoid opioids. Uh, an addiction medicine specialist would be someone that can help in the situation where there's a history of substance abuse, a psychiatrist and psychologist can help when there's uh, comorbidities of psychiatric or psychological origin. Uh, it's important to consider a medical home for these patients, essentially a family practice doctor who can help with referrals uh, for these patients and knows their whole medical background. What are alternatives to opioids? Well, there are several. Uh, these should be used in all chronic pain patients not just patients that are at risk for abusing opioids. Uh, they can be used early in the treatment regimen in the hopes of avoiding uh, opioids and the development of addiction. Um, you don't have to use all of these, and you don't have to use them in any sort of step fashion. Uh, included in all of these subsegments may be alternative medicines. I didn't separate that out, but first thing might be physical modalities of pain relief, such as physical therapy, exercise, massage, yoga, TENS, acupuncture. Uh, medications other than opioids would include acetaminophen or Tylenol, anti-inflammatory medications or arthritis medicines, anti-seizure medications, antidepressant medications, muscle relaxers, and local anesthetics. All these medicines can help decrease the patient's pain complaint and reliance on opioids uh, for management of their pain. Uh, anti-anxiety medications don't seem to have much of a benefit in pain and we don't use those very often in, in most pain clinics. Uh, psychological intervention would include things like cognitive behavior modification and stress management. Uh, getting more aggressive, we might consider interventional in injection therapies for pain such as spinal uh, canal, nerve blocks, joint injections. In these situations we're injecting steroids and local anesthetics to numb up nerves and reduce inflammation. Uh, getting even more advanced would be things such as spinal cord stimulation. Uh, once you get to these treatments, the patient probably will have used some opioids because these treatments are more expensive and more invasive. And finally, some type of definitive surgical treatment or optim optimal medical care. Uh, obvious would be a joint replacement for 
a severely arthritic hip or, or knee. Uh, effective medication control, such as diabetes, might help to control the disease better and avoid the development of complications such as peripheral neuropathy and foot ulcers. Should people who have a history of a substance abuse be prescribed pain pills for a legitimate pain condition? This is easy, the answer is yes. It's the standard of medical care to dictate, I'm sorry, the standard of medical care would dictate it is correct and ethical to use these medications in these scenarios. You must document the pain condition. You should document the consideration of complication, complicating factors such as abuse and secondary gain. You want to attempt to maximize non-narcotic therapy in these patients and you want to use opioid contracts and consents to establish uh, ground rules for the use of these medicines and these, in, in these patients and show that you have concerns for these problems. Thank you and please stay tuned for subsequent segments in this series.